So today I like to ask Nim Jo to share his experience on his uh, experiment on the uni direction and the bi direction force and momentum. So what happened is, let me share with you that uh, I have a group <coughs> which is the Wing Chun version 2 group in the Facebook. This is only for uh, serious uh, technical friends only. And Nim Jo have shared his experiment with the uni direction straight line attack, <clears throat> like uh, in today's Wing Chun. And also the bi-direction momentum as uh, I have shared the other day on the uh, Wing Chun version 2 in this YouTube channel. So uh, in the Facebook group, Nim Jo is very nice to, to share all his video, about six of them. And so I invite Nim Jo to share with us here, what does he feel? You know, what is the difference between the, uh, the, the unidirections and the bidirection? Uh, way of handling the body. Uh, again, this is <clears throat> not about who is the best fighter, who is the most authentic, but sharing <clears throat> what is the difference? What, what can it do? What is the limitations? So uh, I will let uh, Nimjo share it. And uh, also Nimjo will, will share with you that who he is and who is his partner, you know, uh, what what is the background of the training before he shared the, the, the what is he experienced in his uh, experiment? So Nimjo, please share with us here. Okay, thank you, Hendrik. Um, so the first thing I need to say is that um, I'm a wing tuner, just like any other wing tuner. Um, and in no way, what I'm doing is a reflection of uh, the teaching of any school or any lineage or anything like that. Um, of course, I've been studying post 1870s or a a branch of post 1870s Wing Chun. Um, but in no way do these experiments represent uh, the school I go to or, or people like that. And the second thing I need to I need to say is that I trained uh, the six thirteen three with Hendrik. And uh, finished it last year um, after three months of hard work and being corrected and uh, shouted at, <laughs> getting things wrong a lot of the time. Um, uh, and it was a learning experience, which really changed the way that um, I do everything uh, now. So, and the second thing, uh, the third thing I need to say is a thank you to my friend uh, from Samuel, Samuel Maisie, who is... Um, uh, BJJ uh, practitioner. He's a black belt. Um, he's competed uh, many, many times. He's also um, he also practiced Olympic wrestling and uh, various other striking martial arts like Muay Thai and Sabat and uh, boxing, kickboxing, these kind of things. He's got he's ten years younger than me as well, so um, you can really get an understanding uh, of the difference in level. Um, so the 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 experiment was very simple. Um, I was I was going to apply uh, unidirectional momentum and unidirectional force, uh, and the only the only uh, clue that I gave him was that he could take me down any way he wanted. Okay, so I would just launch uh, different kinds of attacks using unidirectional momentum and force, and his only goal was to take me down, and um, and then I would. Uh, observe uh, or reflect afterwards how I felt about it or during what was during uh, the takedown what was happening um, and so um, we really we really stripped it down a lot so um, I wasn't really interested in uh, um, in uh, in hand techniques or or these kind of things more the motor which was generated uh, behind these um, attacks which I was which I was launching against Sam and um, and I made, uh, I made, we made, we 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 did it for about an hour. Uh, 
Um, and then I, when I got too tired of going down and standing up every five seconds, <laughs> it was pretty tiring getting slammed on the floor. Um, we called it a day and then I went back and edited the videos. Um, uh, and of course, each one of those videos, there is, uh, or each one of the time, each one, each time we decided to press the record button, there's a different or a variation of um, how force is being generated in unidirectional momentum. So, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I, I, it's difficult for me to explain it unless you see these videos, of course. But, um, but you can imagine a stripped down, uh, you know, a stripped down car, I guess, um, with a with a kind of old motor, um, <laughs> trying to uh, trying to compete with um, something which is a lot newer on the market, which can do many more different things. I mean, that's the uh, that's the the perfect allegory that I can I can uh, I can give um, this the limitations of a unidirectional momentum versus a bidirectional momentum, like something a, rap, a grappler or judoka or a um, or a wrestler might give you, right? Or a BJJ guy. Um, of course, we weren't interested in like uh, ground fighting. That wasn't the idea that I get into a BJJ position. Start, we, start, uh, we start rolling on the floor because the idea was that, you know, as soon as the, I'm slammed down on the, um, or taken down or slammed on, onto the floor, then, the, you know, a, a, large, a, large, uh, a large amount of that exchange or result of that fight is already taken away or if not lost lost completely so that was the idea so so <clears throat> unidirection you mean that you're using the 1870s or today's wing chun the linear straight line type of uh, mechanics and the way how you attack and so forth right and that's then right. by directional you're using that's, like, that's right the by direct by the uh, bi-directional, you mean that uh, it is using like the Wing Chun version to 1850s type of the, 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 the handling of the momentum and so forth. Now, the very key point here is, what do you experience when you facing, say, your friend who is in BJJ break bell and uh, in a striking art, like practically is an MMA uh, uh, player, what do you experience if you are using the uh, unidirectional type of uh, of uh, of uh, handling of your body, and also uh, what is the difference if you using the uh, bidirectional? Uh, which one, you know, what is your experience when you use unidirections uh, the, to your opponent? Uh, what is the 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 the, the the result or the uh, the the experience when you use the bidirectional with your uh, your opponent. Can you please uh, elaborate for, for us? Yeah, sure. So, so the first thing to say, um, contrary to a, a lot of eight, post eighteen seventies winter, but I was I was not on the counter. Okay, so I was I was usually the one going forward, <clears throat> making the first move. So that's one notable difference. And the second thing, there was not any kind of hand techniques. There was very few hand techniques involved. Um, what there was, um, was a lot of surging forward, uh, being square on, um, being in a distance which was uh, close quarters but not sticking body. So it may be long fist or mid range or, or close quarters, but you're in a dangerous knockout range. So, so that was the first difference. And then when the attacks were launched, um, uh, what I expected. Experience generally over the and different videos and over the hour that we were practicing because there was a lot more videos was that I had no time. Um, so you think that you're you think that you, you're because you're going in one direction. You want to plow the guy over. You want to um, you want to blast through him. Okay. Um, you want to blast through his center line, whatever. Um, uh, using this straight line attack. And before you know it, you're being scooped off the ground. Um, you, you're being taken down at an angle through a double leg, single leg. Um, maybe you've got, uh, he's got underhooks and then he's, uh, he's, he's tripping you backwards. So the time involved, you really, you don't have time to think about it. So um, first thing you think is that you're doing something uh, which is, uh, an attack, and then you suddenly realize that it's you that, that is being 
thrown thrown on the floor. You're in the air. You're in the air. Um, your feet are off the ground and your forefoot off the ground and you're going backwards onto your back. And of course, we did it very lightly. When I, the idea was not to like, you know, hurt each other, kill each other. I'm not going to stick my thumbs in his eyes or I'm not going to bite him or, you know, he's not going to, uh, I'm not going to elbow him. And he's not going to do that to me either because the only idea was that you take me down, which is a speciality for any grappler, um, jiu-jitsu player or wrestler. Um, um, if they can if they can finish the fight doing it that way, they're going to do it that. And if you fall from four foot, um, and you land on on your back, you're going to be eating soup for the next three months, you know. So, so that the the time involved between thinking, surging forward, and launching your attack with unidirectional moment, and the moment to where you don't know what's happening is a split second. I mean, it's really really fast. Um, you, I, you don't, I couldn't feel what he was doing. Doing right, I, I couldn't. I didn't know where he was a lot of the time, so. You know, suddenly he's like, you know, okay, so he's he's a BJJ black belt as well. He's he's very quick and he's he's younger than me, so he's there in front of me. You think you've got a hand on him, and he's he's on the side of you, um, or he's at the back of you, or he's parallel to you, and you're you're going backwards or you're going up in the air. That was the that was the sensation. Um, so helplessness is probably <laughs> you're helpless, right, in that situation. You realize that your body is is totally unbalanced. That you um, you haven't even considered your legs because you're just thinking about striking. You're thinking about this movement of, of you know, this upper body movement, and you realise that your body is top heavy, right? So, so all it needs is to someone to take your legs out, and you're gone, all right? Or, or to someone to unstabilise your legs and push you backwards from your head, and then you're backwards. You're going, you're flying back. So this time involved was nothing, you know, and that was the. So it means that uh, there's no the first, resistance. Um, the first feeling. There's no. It means that there's no resistance. There was no exchange. There's no real exchange because the, the battle is already won from his point of view. You know, as soon as I overcommit to an attack, or as, as soon as I am launching forward, um, not really taking into consideration anything, um, which I'm getting from him because I'm not really touching him anyway. And even if I do get lucky enough um, to clinch up with him, he's already two steps ahead, and he probably, you know, you probably. You, 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 your hands are going forward to clinch the guy, right? But he, he's, he's already two steps ahead of you. So he knows you, you're going to go for that. <laughs> he already knows where, where, what weight, um, on what foot your weight is when you're clinching. So he knows exactly which leg to take out. So um, that's, that's kind of the, the feeling when you, you, you launch this uh, unidirectional attack. And straight line, but of course, like we're also permitting uh, in the experiments. We're also permitting um, the guy moves out of the way, and I follow him. You know, the typical um, suddenly he's not there, he's not in touching range, so I'm following him with this unidirectional mo uh, movement, and it's very slow. Um, it's very very slow. Um, even if you try to go fast, you're not going to be as fast as him, um, because you're 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 pursuing the guy, and he's he's cutting the angles and cutting the distance and cutting the level. I mean, so the you know, um, it's true that uh, in these experiments, I, you know, I really limited it down so that there was no, there was, we went sprawling, uh, there was very uh, little clinching. Um, there was, there was um, the insistence to get to a, 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 a range where I felt like, or where I could touch him or hit him. All right. Which is a lot, a lot what you see in Chisau exchanges and these kind of things are, Today in post 1870, you see these guys like uh, Chisa range, and then they go trying to hit each other. It was, a, it was this kind of momentum, right? Where you're like uh, train crash momentum, trying to follow the guy, you know. Um, and it, it's uh, yeah, this it's really so, um, not 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 that useful. <clears throat> so it means that it's defenseless versus versus uh, our opinion, uh, our opponent, if they are using those type of uh, art. Those type of uh, engine or mechanism, if you use unidirections or today's line, uh, linear, straight, all this this type of uh, uh, attack, charging attack, and uh, following angle, yeah. it, it it you just you just cannot defend yourself. You can it, it just it just it just it just yeah. uh, right. Even when you clinch up with the guy, even when I clinched up with him on a couple of occasions, and he. 
spins you and you say, okay, I go with me. He's already, he already knows that he's spinning me this way. He's going to take me back this way. So, um, you know, this, this go with the flow kind of thing is, is also not, um, <laughs> is very limiting, right? Um, so how, how is the for Defenseless, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's defenseless. So how is about the uh, bi-directional? When you're using bi-directional? With him, yeah, no, I'm in no means I'm I'm no I'm no master of it, and it's something that I'm still learning, and you know, um, but what can I say? Uh, you you really, um, you're really feeling uh, an exchange between the two things. So so whatever ha whatever's happening is not is not as fast as what was happening with unidirectional. Room. You have. You have time to 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 be aware of the situation, to respond to the situation. So um, he's taller than me and a lot quicker than me. He's like a, a little pit bull terrier. He's very quick, you know. So uh, and I, I got a weight, I got a weight advantage over him as well, and a height advantage. But it makes no difference. So um, I was having to constantly uh, level change um, against the momentum that he was giving to me. If not, he's going to take my legs out again. But using bidirectional mo uh, momentum and bidirectional force, um, even when striking and he's stopping, he's parrying, um, you're, able, you're able to feel how he's parrying and where he's going as he's parrying. Right then, when you eventually get into contact, and he's he's going to close he's going to close the distance because he wants to uh, do an uchimata or he wants to he wants to throw you. You're able to counter it. Um, you may not be able to um, beat him, <laughs> but you're not getting thrown off your feet, and you're not going yeah off the floor, and you're not going backward. Okay, so. You're not doing something ridiculous, okay? Um, you're able to struggle. So, so what? What? Uh, this is the thing, okay? Right? For beating is meaning that you know you are testing who who is trained more, who have more skill, and so forth. But for now, in my understanding, what you are testing is you're testing the platform, whether the unidirectional platform be able to. To face this type of uh, this type of attack, or this type of counter attack, or the uh, the the bidirectional, which one is be able to have a, offer a platform that is uh, be able to face the opponent in this type of art, right? Yeah. So so sure. so, so so your conclusion. Should should it be should it be that it's better to change everything to bi-directional? No, even if you lose, but at least you be able to to counter, you be able to exchange. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I think it's um, a foregone conclusion for anyone who who plays these kind of experiments or plays these kind of games, because at the end of the day, it was a game. No, no one's trying to beat each other. I was trying to feel what it was like. Um, but obviously, bidirectional movement and momentum, bidirectional force has uh, ha allows you allows you to move in a in a natural way, um, which is uh, which is intuitive and depends on what the other person is feeding you. Um, you are you are open and uh, sensing and aware to what the other person is doing all the time, and also aware the limitations of your own body height weight, flexibility, you know that, right? You already know that if you've got the six chords. Um, so with this bi-directional reading, if you like, um, of an exchange, it's easier to, um, it's easier to predict, it's easier to uh, control what you, you're doing with your own body um, according to what the other person is feeding you. So, you know, so for, for me, I, I, why I, I, I share this unidirectional and bidirectional before is this. See, we need to have a Wing Chun today need a platform, a platform to, to build out the skyscraper and to, to, to build out all the techniques and for the defense, for counter and so forth. It's like a land, okay? Now, very obviously, at least on my side, what I see te in technical analysis is that unidirectional will not be able 
to 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 like uh, in in the sense of building building is not be able to build all those building which is can sustain okay in this modern world but the bi-direction is the land or the platform that you can use the bi-directional <clears throat> and then you can grow grow on top of it because the important thing our platform is so that so okay i was i i get beat by my opponent but if i have the the same platform equal platform tomorrow i'm going to using based on my platform to 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 train and i could be able to beat him or or or, or, or par with him so it's like a technology game today you have a 4g phone or you have a 5g phone if you want to if you want to uh, compete here when your opponent have a 5G, you better have a 5G. Okay, and then all the applications and everything, well, you know, uh, different, like a different, uh, di different uh, company. Some might have a better applications, but whatever, it is all based on the same platform. Okay, uh, which is par with your opponent or else it is trouble. Uh, you don't want to have yeah. 5G platform to to compete with a 2g platform and i think there's so much there's so much um attention being drawn to the word structure that people people mistake the platform that you're talking about for something that they call structure right um so i mean the platform might be chisa or no, but, but but in this sense we're talking about we're talking about um how the body can how the body can adapt ever is being um, thrown at it or what in whatever situa situation it finds itself and the idea the idea of structure is is totally counter um counterproductive um at least at least the way that i've heard structure being talked about um or being being shown which is the idea that you know it's almost like um it's almost like you know when you have a, a modeling contest and the person has to um has to has to pose for the camera right um uh, and you take you take the still shot and you say well you know this this person's incredible or you know in whatever or you know this person um, has everything um but but you're not taking into consideration the surroundings what's happening outside of the photo movement um you know you're just looking at how something you think is supposed to stand up. Um, so at, what, at the end of the day, what you get is a lot of force, which is generated from rigid um, stature or posture, um, which has nothing to do with the reality of movement, right? Or the reality in, in this case of fighting. I mean, if that's what you want to talk about. Um, so it's counterproductive to health and it's counterproductive to um, training and, and fitness and recovery and these kind of things. Yeah, it, it is structure is a problem actually, and uh, <clears throat> if you play with like your friend in BJJ, you might notice that structure actually is giving them the opportunity to take you down even faster. Big. Yeah, I mean, in one of the videos, I I generate, I ge tried to generate a lot of uh, unidirectional momentum from structure, uh, and the result is that yeah, you can you can. You can stand up for a couple of seconds more, but that's it. I mean, um, quickly, you know, you're so concentrated on bracing in this kind of structural uh, photo, if you like, um, that that the guy has already had the opportunity to take you back and you know or take you down or, or or look for a different position or trip you up uh, or change levels, and you 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 know you've been able to last for one point five seconds more. That's it. You know. So, uh, so, so yeah, it is clear now. You know, I actually uh, encourage everybody to try try it out. It's not about who is the better art, who is the uh, better fighter, who beat who. But uh, the yeah. first thing you want to build out uh, a, a good system is that you need to have a good platform. If you don't have the good platform. It's like you don't have the foundation to build your skyscraper. Then, uh, then it will not work. 
uh, when you face the your, your competitions. And uh, so <clears throat> good, great that uh, you share with us. And uh, let me ask you one question. Hmm. For the six core elements, since you mentioned in the beginning, does the six core element training help you in this case of testing? Yeah, <laughs> I, it was funny because I had to turn, <clears throat> it's like I have to turn off, it's very difficult to turn off your six core elements when you're trying to do something which um, which, is, which is totally counter, counterintuitive or feels wrong for the body. Um, uh, so, so, so as soon as I turned it back on and you, I was doing, we were doing some free play and free exchanges where again, six core elements was being used or, you know, I was able to move in the way that I, I wanted to, or, or, or felt like was, was beneficial. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a totally different ball game. It's, uh, you, you're able to, you're able to exchange, uh, more evenly um you're able to move more freely more naturally to co to come you know uh, to combine one position to the other without thinking it in terms of pieces but rather that you as a, a whole thing moving around you know we, a thing with legs with feet with knees with with uh with breathing um with you're moving around as a whole piece not as a dis you know sort of disembodied half half piece where you're stuck to the floor um and that's a lot less tiring um using the six core elements and um a lot more fun actually in this kind of exchange this kind of uh, playful exchange a lot more fun than doing things in um in the other way which was extremely tiring and um extremely strenuous on the body as well so uh, so yeah it makes a big big difference so in other words the six core element training is very different than uh, the the, uh, the 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 common structures, uh, Wing Chun structures, uh, bracing those kind of uh, training, because uh, the six core element give you yeah, the sensitivity, awareness, and sensitivity, and your body be able to to uh, to to function in the way that if there's anything go wrong, you know you know that you need to change your body. Am I right? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And I don't. I, the truth is, I don't think I would have even made these videos if I hadn't studied the six core element, because I probably wouldn't be interested, um, or I might be scared of, um, I don't know, or intimidated by 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 exchanging with someone who's like a, a, prof a, a semi professional professional uh, wrestler or beat down. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have wouldn't have done it. You know, I wouldn't have the curiosity. Um, or the the interest. So, if I hadn't done the six core elements, I mean, it's just you, the more you learn about yourself, the more you ask questions about things that you don't know, right? In other words, is that six core element is not a uh, uh, something which is a secret, but it is some a uh, a condition of your body, so that your body be able to have a a sense on what is going on in in dynamic am i right exactly exactly yeah um and i mean the key word that you talked about a lot of the time in the first the first core element in the physical body is uh or, or, or sorry in the mind in the second core element in, in the mind is talking about awareness right um i mean that that's just a massive part of if, if you're not aware then then obviously you, you don't have any questions because you don't, you know, you, you, you don't really ask yourself anything um, when something goes wrong or, or when something goes right, or, or if you can't do something or if somebody does something that's different, you don't understand it. If you don't have that awareness, you're not going to ask the question. Right. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, it, it is actually, uh, the 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 awareness is important without the awareness we don't know our body and uh, one thing i can say is that uh, the reason why you you feel that you lost time if you use a uni directions to facing your opponent is because you are rigid you get into a tunnel vision that uh, you you lost your awareness the minute you lost your awareness you become rigid 
tunnel vision and you will not be able to respond to whatever the environment because you're not aware of the environment. You just execute this thing. But then by the time the, the opponent attack you, uh, it is uh, too late for you because it, it has to have, uh, uh, you, you have to sense this strong of intensity of your opponent before you realize that something happened. As for the awareness, you, you have a very, uh, very sensitive background that something is changed right away. You dynamically change with it. So losing time in those type of uh, fight is actually your losing awareness. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, it's, it's, very, it's very dangerous as well. Um, you know, if you've got an old car... <clears throat> And you think you're gonna you're gonna into this guy, um, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, gonna drive him off the road, and and he's got um, you know a, a brand new whatever four by four Mercedes, I don't know whatever or something. It, it, you're not gonna be able to do it, right? Because <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. If you if you think about it, if you think about it, when people you know we all get into accident, right? You know, crash into the wall or smash into other people's car while we back up or, or, or you know bicycle and everything if you think about that you always lost awareness before those things happen and i think one of the it, people talk about intention all the time you know, i'm sitting in this car and my intention is to ram this guy off the road um and i'm so 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 focused on on this intention i'm not really aware um that my car is, is is making a really terrible noise. Um, that the engine is brakes are not as good as they should be, um, <laughs> and uh, and the other guy in front of me has got a brand new um, latest edition Mercedes four x four. Because I'm not aware of it. Because I'm just you know just thinking about my intention to ram him off the road. So intention, I you know people use it's another word that they use all the time to talk about things. But um, as far as I'm concerned, in what I've learned in the six core elements through uh, about intention, um, it's just one function of the mind and not necessarily yeah, yeah. most important. That's why the other day I share uh, on my video, on the first is your concentrations, the second is observations, the third level is the deep down is awareness. If you want to put intention there with your concentrations and focus, that is not what it is in dynamic. In dynamic, you need this uh, awareness level. If you are stuck in the intention level, you you can only you're gonna cause yourself tunnel vision if you hold it for too long. You say, "Well, I have intent. I want to. I want to uh, throw a punch." Well, that's all. Okay, based on the awareness, it pops up the intention. You execute it. That's all. But uh, if we don't, if we don't, uh, if we don't have any any awareness based on intention only, that means we we cannot play dynamically. Okay, sure. and uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, oh, thank, and, you. thank you. Now I'll share with the world, uh, and hopefully more people testing out. This is not about uh, Wing Chun 1850 is better than Wing Chun 1870 or who's grandmaster or who beat who. No, this is about testing no. the platform because only if we have a legit, a good, sure. proper platform that everybody be able to, to grow up from that. And platform, well, the, the, the unidirection platform might working in some place somewhere before, but obviously for now, it is no longer that case. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ninja. Thank you, Andre. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.